mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied for me. There my bed and soul found liberty at Calvary. Dear Heavenly Father, into your presence we come, not by the works that we have done, but by your grace and your grace alone. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the privilege of fellowship. Once again, Lord, I am here to share your word, Lord, to your children. May you open their spiritual eyes and ears, Lord, so that they may receive from you and you alone as I decrease, so you may increase in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah! Glory to Jesus! Hallelujah! Praise the year! Hallelujah! Praise the name! Say, come, son, adder! Hallelujah, praise Satan. Glory to Jesus. I greet you all in the most gracious name. The name above all names. The name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a brand new day. And so I want to welcome you back to Beulah Land. If you are returning, thank you so much for the love and support and the loyalty as well. And so if you are new here, my name is Bula. I'm the daughter of the Most High God. I am born again. My sins are forgiven. I am so happy this morning. I want to bless the name of the Lord. You know, I came back from the service yesterday. And as I was here trying to prepare something to eat, I said, Father God, I don't have a message for tomorrow. Your children will be waiting for a message and I don't have, you know. And then I, I got a bit worried. Why is God not talking, you know? And so later on, um, I was actually tired yesterday. Uh, I think also my body recovered. It's fully recovered. So I, I dozed off very early. And so through the grace of God, he visited me at night and then I heard him talking early hours of the morning. I heard him talking to me and I am so happy, Bazalwan. I'm happy. Well, I had a message. I have a message that I wanted to share for quite some time. Every time I want to share this message, God brings another message. And so I was thinking that I'll just share the message that I so long wanted to share, you know. But I don't know what's happening. Always when I want to share this message, God comes with a new message. But when the time is right, when he finally agrees, allows me to share the message, I will tell you that God has finally agreed. Um, you know, when you are a preacher, a true preacher of the word of God knows what I'm talking about. A true preacher of the word of God is a candidate for association with the unseen world. You don't preach your own things. You receive from the spiritual realms. The message is from the Lord. Even Paul, when he was teaching about the Lord's Supper, he came to the believers and he said to them, Ngoguba minangagwa mugela enko sini loku engi niniga kona. For I have received from the Lord that which also I bring unto you. We receive from the Lord, from the ancient of days. If he is quiet, there is nothing we can do about it. And so I thank the Lord. Today, uh, the Lord is allowing me to talk about favor. When I speak of the favor of God, Mary comes to the picture, Joseph comes to the picture, David comes to the picture. Hallelujah. And so I am here, beloved, to say, favor attracts attacks. One who is favored by God 
will always be targeted by the devil. Trouble will seek them. And also hardships will follow them. We are going to be looking at two characters from the Bible, which is Mary, the mother of Jesus, and also Joseph, who was hated by his brethren. Hallelujah. We are reading from the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 30 only. But before we read, I guess it's I trust in God wherever I may be upon the land around the stormy seas come what may be from day to day my heavenly father watches over me oh yes I trust in God and I know he cares for me on the mountain top, around the stormy seas, there'll be no more sorrow keeps my soul. My heavenly Father watches over me. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 1 verse 30 reads as follows. Well, Let's start from verse 28 rather. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Hallelujah. May God bless the reading of his word. When the Savior calls, I will answer. When he calls for me, I will hear. When the Savior calls, I will answer. For I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh yes, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere I'll be listening for my name. Hallelujah. Okay, here is a scenario. We see this young woman, Mary. She's engaged to be married to the love of her life, Joseph. And so, as she's busy preparing for the wedding celebration, the wedding day, you know, something comes that interferes with the whole program, with the whole process. You know, if anything, it's every lady's dream to get married. Every lady starts dreaming of the day they're going to walk down the aisle. From a very young age, you'll see a girl child looking at magazines, you know, wedding dresses. You know, even a movie about weddings, you know, wedding celebration is something joyful for a girl child. And so here is Mary. She's getting married. She's so happy and excited, you know. And then the angel of the Lord says to her, Blessed art thou among women. Thou art highly favored, you know. Thou that art highly favored. Glory to Jesus. And so what happens is that she's supposed to carry a child. Hallelujah. She's not married. What will the partner say? What will her fiance say? What will the people say? What kind of a favor 
that has such a great stigma attached to it. You know, Mary accepted the word of the Lord and she said, be it unto me according to your word. And so we see Joseph, he's troubled. I mean, what will people say? And the Bible says, Joseph wanted to put Mary away privately to avoid sh shame. He was in other ways trying to disassociate himself with the whole shameful situation. And who else could blame him? The guy probably led a pure life. And then when he's supposed to be joyful, do things according to the order, then this is happening. He's going to be tainted, obviously. And so he wants to put Mary privately. He wants to put Mary away privately. And so the Bible says, the angel of the Lord visited him and he says, don't be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for what she's impregnated, impregnated with is of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And so Joseph and Mary proceeded, you know, they journeyed on a midst of talks and criticisms, you know. And so it comes time now for Mary to give birth. Here we are speaking about a woman who is highly favored. There is no place for her to give birth. All the maternity wards are full. When they knock here, it's, it's full. When they go to this other hospital, it's full. I mean, what kind of favor is this? Yet I am here to say, favor attracts attacks. A person who is favored of the Lord will always be followed by hardships. So they finally had to go to a manger for Jesus to be born. Hallelujah. The Savior of the whole world born in a manger. He wasn't born in a good hospital. Neither was a maternity ward for him. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, shared accommodation with animals. He wasn't born in a good hospital. Neither was a maternity ward for him. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, shared accommodation with animals. It all started in a manger. Everything started in a manger. For me to be where I am. For me to be what I am. Even for me to preach the words this morning. It started in a manger. Hallelujah. And Jesus was born. And as Jesus was born. Here is another attack through Herod. The Bible says, after hearing that Jesus is born, he was intimidated and Herod ordered that all the boys be killed. And the target was Jesus. What kind of favor is this that attracts so much attacks? It's in Gondwin. Ya zeya figa na gu herodi lenta. Ile teleo wombigo. Herodu buko sivako. Sebu pele lwenga mantra. E la le la la. Se figi lingwe nyama. Yes is wesa gwa juta. I peti kazi la yo. Eli susi zono nya. Lona likedika lanya. Glory to Jesus. And so the Bible says, Herod was threatened. And because of his, this threat, all innocent children were killed. All boys were killed. From Jesus' age, you know, they all were killed. 
just because of one person. Favor attracts attacks. If you are favored, you should know that. The situations that, that are going to be altered, all because of you. There's innocent people who are going to be tainted by those altered situations. All because of the favor of God that rests upon you. New laws are going to be executed. All because of you. WhatsApp chat groups are going to be altered. All because of you. And they'll come and say, only admins must comment on this group. No, but there's a person who is favored by God, who just stepped in. And so everything must change. Favor attracts attacks. If you are favored, you must know that you are a threat. I once read a certain story. They say there was this teacher who hated a certain boy in class. And so there was uh, somebody who was coming to give the students some, you know, gifts. And so when she arrived with the gift, she realized that she miscalculated, you know, so some may not get the gift. Guess what? The most hated boy was at the front. And the teacher, seeing the predicament she's at, she's in, rearranged the row before the bearer of gifts arrived and so when the bearer of gifts walked in the boy was now at the back the last on the row you know as the bearer of gifts was standing she said there's not enough space here for me to operate and so she says, I'm going to be starting at the back as a result of the space. So may you please turn, which therefore made the most hated boy the first in the row. The favor of God cannot be bought. It cannot be treated, traded. It cannot be manipulated. Glory to Jesus. I said to you, favor attracts attacks. If you are a person who is most favored by God, you ought to know that if Mary was attacked, if David was attacked, if Joseph was attacked, you are not exceptional. But fear not. God will be with you every step of the way. Joseph, when you read the book of Genesis, he was hated by his brothers because of the favor of God that rested upon him. And so they sold him to the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites sold him to Potiphar in Egypt. And even in Potiphar's house, his, the favor of God just sprang out. Potiphar loved him. And since he was favored of Potiphar, Potiphar's wife attacked him. She spoke lies about Joseph. She framed Joseph. And Joseph was thrown into jail. In jail, we find that the favor of God still sprang out. It was just resting upon Joseph. He was there interpreting dreams. And as a result, he came out of jail and he was made the third ruler. He became the third ruler. 
the favor of God cannot be bought, traded, or manipulated. As much as it attracts attacks, Kodwangi ya tandwa, gingubani, oba ye. You know, let me tell you a testimony about my life. I always knew from a very young age that I'm not like the rest. I always knew at a very young age that I'm a special child, that the favor of God rests upon me. Although I did not know it was God's favor at that time, but I was very much aware that I'm not like the rest. Even when throughout my lifetime people kept telling me that I'm a special child, I'm favored of the Lord, it was just a confirmation. And so I'd laughed, I mean, I'd laugh within and say, Hi, boo. Okay. You know, if you've watched one of my videos, I made mention the fact that I was really shy. I was very shy. And so, there'd be days in class where we were expected to do orals. You know, the prepared speeches. And so they'd tell us a day before that, tomorrow we are delivering speeches. And so I just pretend I'm sick at home and my mom would say, I don't like it when my child is sick. I feel pain whenever my child is sick. And so she'd allow me to stay at home. So I'd remain at home. But okay, the following day, I'd have to go to school. So they'd make me, you know, deliver the speech. But man, there was this African teacher. My African teacher really adored me. You know, he understood me. He was just getting me. And so he said, don't worry, Bula. You can come uh, deliver the speech in my classroom. I mean, in my staff room. And I went to his office. And as I was there with my head like this, you know, you know, I delivered the speech and he gave me 100%. He said, no, I understand. She's so wise. And so I proceeded to secondary school. I found favor with the teachers. They just adored me. The, the school is big, you know, we have four, four grade eight, four grade nines, four grade, you, you see? So, out of all the children there, Beulah, you know, they'd come and send me to buy them stuff. Sometimes they come when it's almost lunch break, embracing me, you know, the, the, my female teachers embracing me from the classroom in front of the children to the staff room and i'd stand there and they say she's really so cute we love you ne? And then they'd send me and then there was this other time the principal of the whole school marked me as well i don't know our it was just my early days at my secondary school i was new I was 13 years old in grade 8. He marked me. One day as he was walking, uh, adjusting his, you know, spectacles, he said, yeah, from Violet Bank, right? You know, the place where I'm coming from is next to Violet Bank, so he assumed I'm coming from Violet Bank. Uh, so I was like, hi, bo. And he marked me. He knew me. Unfortunately, he's late now. And I had to 
recite a poem at his funeral. May his soul rest in peace. The favor of God cannot be bought, traded, or manipulated. And then I proceeded to tertiary. I found favor with the securities. It's like everywhere I go, I stand out. It's got nothing to do with what I wear. It's got nothing to do with how I act. It's got nothing to do with what I say. It's favor. And that favor, unfortunately, attracts attacks. I went to church. I found favor with the pastor there. He really adored me so much. He loved me like his own daughter. And sisters started teaming up against me. Manufactured lies about me. And then I was stopped from, you know, rendering solos a church. Um, the favor of God attracts attacks. Everywhere I go, I see God's favor through his children. Whether it's at the conventions, whether it's at the combines, you know, it's so amazing. Sometimes I'd hear just someone calling my name for the first time and I'd be like, Hi, Bo, where, where do you know me from? How do you know my name? You know, they'd be saying, Beulah. Then I'd be like, Hi, Bo, I, I know I'm the only Beulah around here. My name is not a pandemic. And so, I just see it's the favor of God. I am marked. You know, at times, we'll be in the service. Maybe somewhere. And a man of God will just come and say, What's your name? And I say, Beulah. He'll be saying, God bless you. Proceeding with his duties. It didn't happen once. It didn't happen twice. It happened more than four times. When I was watching the movie uh, of the biblical movie of Esther, Esther was a Moabite and so they used to sacrifice children at the altar of Chemosh. And so uh, one day they were with the, the chief you know, I don't know if he's a chief or a, or a what, what to call that man. Out of the girls that were with Esther, he just singled her out. He says to her, what's your name? She says, Esther. I think the author or rather the, yeah, the writer of the movie was simply trying to portray the favor of God that rested upon Esther. And from being a Moabite, I mean Ruth, I'm speaking about Ruth the, the Moabite, I'm sorry. Ruth was a Moabite and so they used to sacrifice uh, children at the altar. And so one of the people in authority said, who are you? He didn't ask the others and she says, Ruth, my name is Ruth. You know, the writer of the movie understands the grace, I mean, the favor of God, how it operates. It singles you out. It's got nothing to do with what you do or what you say or what you dress. It cannot be bought. It can't be traded. Neither can it be manipulated. Hallelujah. In closing, I just want to tell you a testimony. I have a lot of testimonies. Um, some years back, we went to a psychiatry ward to check a sister from the church I was fellowshipping at. 
I think we were four or three. I can't remember. Yeah, I think we were four. And so we arrived there only to find that the sister was discharged, you know. So we're just busy talking there when one patient who is mentally ill approached us and then she said she knows me. She said to me, your name is Bula. I know you from Varsity. You used to study psychology and then you were staying at Mami Lodi. You always boarded a train at Mayor Station. And all the things she was saying were, is true. But when I look at her, I don't even know her. I couldn't recognize her, neither remembering seeing he, her anywhere. And then she says to me, you know, Beulah, you are a true woman of God. Your faith is unshakable. You are so unreachable. I'm telling you a true story. I am not here as a motivational speaker. This is a true story that happened a few years ago in 20, either, yeah, in 2015. I was with three sisters from church. If they still remember and are watching this video, they can attest to the fact that a mentally disturbed woman made a confession years ago. And then we asked her, what do you mean? Why are you saying this about Julia? And then she, avoid, she kept avoiding us. And then she came to tell us that she used to steal students' minds and use them for her own benefit. And then we were left amazed. We were so shocked. And so I looked at her. I just saw somebody who is tasting her own medicine. We don't know why she ended up at a psychiatry ward, at a mental institution. We don't know. But sometimes people will do things. The Bible says to not touch the anointed. The anointed is not a pastor. It's not a bishop. The anointed of God are the children of God. Hallelujah. And so one time, Haman, he made a plot against Mordecai and his people so that they may be killed. He prepared some gallows for Mordecai to be hanged. But instead, he was the one hanged on the gallows he prepared for Mordecai. The favor of God can be bought, traded, or manipulated. Glory to Jesus. Unga dhali nge vangeli. Unga dhali nge ntindiso. Touch not the anointed of the Lord. And so in closing, I just want to say, I am stepping into 2023 with a certain type of mentality that will shake this whole world. Maya Angelou says, there is nothing enlightened about shrinking so other people won't feel insecure around you. You are here as an individual as a gene from God to fulfill a certain purpose. Don't let anybody stand in your way. You are not here to steal anybody else's spotlight. You have your own spotlight that you must utilize for the glory of God. Moreover, we are living in the times of spotlights.
the greatest spotlight is the favor of God upon you. And so I just want to say there is nothing. There's no such a thing as a position. You are made by a certain class of people, a certain group of people. There's no such a thing as a mother. You, the reason you are a mother is because you gave birth to children. The reason you are a pastor is because you have sheep. There's people, those people, they are making you what you are. There's no such a thing as a deacon. There's people who make you who you are. Even God himself couldn't be God without us. Hallelujah. In order for God to be God, he needed us. And so he made us in his own image. There is no savior without the lost. There is no healer without the sick. And so there is no such a thing as position, as a position. Respect the people that put you where you are at. I feel uh, I should stop here. May the good, gracious Lord be with you. May he make his face shine upon you. Hallelujah. I coined Lela. Hey, Zulini. Bessie Hamba la Po. Utanda Kona. I coined Lela. Hey, Zulini. Ihamba la Po. Utanda Kona. The songwriter says, There is no way that is going to heaven that operates according to your own desire or will. We are to submit to his will and his will alone. Hallelujah. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with you until the Lord returns.